Good morning. It's time for our Wednesday Word Bomb. And I'm excited this morning to share a little bit of my heart, a little more than I normally do. Uh, some of my struggles. <clears throat> uh, some of where I'm at in my walk with God. And yeah, hopefully it brings some encouragement. And I do have some scripture to read uh, out of Philippians 4. So, first I'm just going to pray. Lord, I thank you for all the people who are listening. And I thank you, God, that you love them like crazy. And that you have grace that none of us have even tapped into yet. In For every situation that we're going through, God, for every stage of life that we're in, you have this grace ready to be poured out on us, God, and fill in every gap and make up all the difference. And Lord, I just appeal to you, and I, 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 we just beg you for more of your grace today, God. And I uh, thank you for your word and for the power of your Holy Spirit at work within us. And that you're constantly drawing us towards yourself. You're constantly uh, leading us into uh, green pastures and making us lie down beside still waters. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for your word that is going to come alive and it's going to um, change us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start out with the word and then I'll come back to uh, what I want to talk about. Philippians 4, verse, verses uh, 4 through 8 or 9. Uh, Always be full of joy in the Lord. This is the... Again, the New Living Translation. Um, it's an older Bible that I have here at work. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing as I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. It's good stuff. It's a very popular, familiar verse, uh, verses. Uh, and, I, you know, as a youth group at church, we're heading into a mental health series, and it's going to be really good. Uh, Belle and I have learned a lot about that over the last several years. And I think we all have mental health. <laughs> and we all need to be healthy. Amen. We have spiritual health. We have physical health. Mental health is not a, a bad word. It's not something to be scared of, those words. Um, we all need to be mentally healthy. And uh, I'm convinced a thousand percent that uh, a strong relationship with the Lord and one that involves, well, you can't have a strong relationship with the Lord without um, being full of his word and allowing it to change you. Um, so this is the foundation of mental health. I'm telling you right now, this, this Bible, <laughs> his word. Um, and getting it in us, and then allowing it to change us. So, uh, you know, I, I, want, I just want to recognize parents this morning. Um, it's kind of where my heart is leading, leaning. And I know, especially parents of teenagers, we can be we can be very anxious and fearful, and uh, making a lot of decisions, and our lives being driven by fear. Um, instead of faith and instead of intentionality instead of from a place of strength and I will just confess that I have been there and I am in that place 
far too often where I am I'm anxious, I'm fearful, and, uh, you know, kind of just empty in a lot of ways. Um, more, more since... More since I've had kids who are in their teens than I ever did before in my life. And, or maybe it's just come to the surface more. Um, regardless, the good news is that the truth of God's Word hasn't changed. In fact, it's just become more clear. It's become more pointed. You know, what is true, it's not that it becomes more true. It just becomes more obvious and it becomes more clear. Uh, and I'm so thankful for God's Word. Um, and, and so what God has been showing me lately is, is that if I'm not equipped to handle, uh, just a normal teenage experience, relationship, parent, child relationship, the communication changes, so many things change. So not just the kid going through the changes, the whole relationship changes, their communication changes, you know, everything about the living in the home and, and I want to say my kids are amazing and they love Jesus and I'm so thankful for them. Uh, but but the enemy still can get in my head and and mess with me and lie to me. And that is the thing that can drive me crazy. That is the thing that causes the fear and the anxiety and, and all that other junk. And I just got to say, I notice when I'm not full of his word, when I'm not... Uh, um, pursuing the Lord as much as I I need to, um, I notice that I can put on this this front of faith and not even realize it. It's, it's almost like subconscious. Like, hey, I'm strong. I'm full of faith. I'm good. I, I, I pray in the Spirit. I'm, I, you know what I mean? I can handle whatever comes at me. But then if I'm not full, you notice the difference between being full of all that God has for us and, and being full of his word and being strong and full of joy, like Paul says, and, 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 and not is, you know, here's the line. And I can be right here a lot, very shallow. Um, and then I realize, you know, there's one little challenge to, to my faith or one little challenge to my peace. And I can just like fall apart. Like, ah! Oh, you know, and, and I can freak out. And, and, and it's God just, it's an indicator. God's going, hey. The best thing that your kids can get from you, yeah, bring them to church, yeah, um, be a godly parent in the home, but the best thing that I can do for my kids as a parent and for, for their mental health and for my mental health and for our spiritual well-being is to be the godly man that God created me to be, the one that he decided way back in my mother's womb, you know, Psalm 139, when he was thinking about me and his, the, the, here's Eric and here's all that he's going to be, if I can get, if I can focus on becoming more like that person, and that only happens by just digging in to this every day, praying in the Spirit all the time, like Paul says, uh, with all kinds of prayers. And so, parents, that's the encouragement. We can't live this life on fumes with the Lord. We can't live this life starving for His Word and, and His presence, not even realizing it. We have to stay full, not just for our own selves, but for our children. So that when the enemy does come and, and mess with us in that parent-child relationship or the choices their kids are making, that it doesn't crater us, it doesn't cause us to freak out, it doesn't make us have a meltdown, whether we let them see it or not. We have a foundation. We have a depth, like the iceberg picture. You know what I mean? There's, we've we've got to have the depth of His Word, um, and that's where the joy comes from. And you know what the Bible says about joy? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So, we just need to go after God every day, with desperation, and uh, let Him deal with the fear and the anxiety and the other stuff. And I t I'm telling you, I know when I'm full, full of God. When I'm full of his word, when I'm talking to him a lot, um, I feel stronger. And I know you do too. So let me pray for you. I'm sorry this was a longer one, but I'm just going to pray for you again. Lord, thank you so much for your word. You're supernatural, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword, God. Your word that 
that divides even soul and spirit, God, that changes us from the inside out. God, that's what we need. So draw us with your loving kindness. Continue as parents, God, to draw us close to you. We need you, Jesus. We need you desperately. And our kids need you, God. But we need you to, to, to make us into the, 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 per, the full expression of who you created us to be, God. So would you do that today? Would you continue to make all things new in our hearts and minds and in the parents, God? Would you just, your kingdom come in their hearts and minds. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Fill them up, God. Fill them up with your Holy Spirit. Fresh new hunger today, right now, for all that you are, for your fullness, God. Let your power, uh, the power of your Holy Spirit be poured out on them today. And for our kids, God, we, we, we bind away every wicked and unclean spirit, God. Every influence that's not from you, we command it to leave and to be cut off in Jesus' name. God, we just declare that our children hear your voice, that they love you passionately, God. That, that they desire to please you above all other things, God. And that you would give them a deep, deep, passionate hunger for your word and for your presence. Thank you for your parents, God. Thank you for these people. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.